Hi everyone. Today I have the pleasure of chatting to Corvini Woodley, a real young trailblazer who is going to tell us about her journey into starting a dynamic and I would say really inspirational group where she just inspires people, mainly women, I think. So Corvini is going to tell us all about it. Hi Corvini. Hi, Shamila. Thank you so much for having me on the show. It's really awesome to be here. It's only a pleasure. I know you're busy with work and you're just um, juggling so many different things at the moment. But do you maybe want to tell us who is Kovani Mudli? Okay. So I'm really a philanthropist at heart. Um, I get a lot of joy from just helping people in general. Um, helping to uplift and empower their lives more than anything. And last year, a team of us, uh, a woman group, really uh, created this concept called Boss Babes of South Africa. And really what it is, is a woman empowerment agency, as well as a digital creation agency. Um, so it's a team of digital creators that got together and said, you know, what can we do to really inspire the women of South Africa? And we came up with this concept and really we have now grown our Facebook group to just over 5,000 members um, of really powerful, authentic South African women, you know, inspiring each other with stories day on day, using it as a platform to market their small businesses and a host of other things. So that's really been something that is really, I'm really passionate about, really close to my heart. Um, and really, I think from an impact point of view, it's really making a huge impact um, for the women of South Africa. That is wonderful, Kovini. Just, uh, I just want to know a little bit about your family and your background, where you hail from. Are you from Johannesburg? Um, just tell us a little bit more about this gorgeous person. Sure, sure. So I actually hail from a little town called Shellcross, which is in Durban, um, south of Durban, really small town, um, very close-knit community. That's where I grew up and completed my high school. Um, I then went on to study and I'm actually a qualified chartered accountant and I work for a large corporate um, based here in Santon. Uh, in terms of my family, I have got a set of twin sisters. Um, they're actually in the public healthcare system. So big shout out to all our healthcare heroes while I'm at it, really fighting COVID-19 at the moment. Um, and really a job that I think is, you know, a calling for most people anyway, to be able to, to give back in such a, in such a powerful way. Um, yeah, that's pretty much about my background. Uh, I became a chartered accountant and I've always found um, the need or the want, or more like a craving, I could call it, to want to you know, help the world and put something bigger than myself out there. So I think um, you know, having a professional qualification is really awesome, um, but it's also very important what you choose to do with that over and above that for me. Um, so what is the impact that you really leave um, for the world or legacy that you leave that can really inspire and uplift other women? So that's really a little bit about me. So why going into the accounting field, chartered accountant, do you maybe want to take me through that? So I've always really been passionate about wanting to help people. And I've been really lucky that the firms or the, the organizations that I've worked for have really allowed me to do that in a really big way. So I was really in consulting. Uh, so I worked for Accenture for many, many years, a really amazing company to work for. Um, and really they've allowed me or they've allowed me the opportunity to be able to go into a business and sort of redesign it so that it's the best version of itself. And I think that really spoke to me in a way to say, you know, we, we, we want to help people to be the best versions of themselves. And you know, being given this opportunity at this global consulting firm was an opportunity for me to help businesses to become the best version of themselves. So I think ultimately, uh, I'm really passionate about helping. So it's just about choosing which channel would be the most appropriate um, sort of path to help people. I mean, I believe that we all have a purpose. And your purpose is sometimes not just one thing. Your purpose could lead you on various sort of channels. Um, and the way you impact the world could also lead you in various channels. So what would you say would be, just say a youngster comes out of school, completes matric, doesn't know what career path to choose. Do you think being in the accounting field is something that one should consider or what sort of skills are needed, what sort of qualifications or matric results are needed for that? So I think the, the standard is quite, um, 
in terms of protocol, I think you just need a pass, and I think um, it was two A's at that time to sort of go in and become a chartered accountant, um, or do a BCom degree as such first. Um, I mean, I think it's just really about what you're passionate about. Uh, I mean, of course, if you if you if your um, you know um, metric results are really awesome and you have a passion or calling towards medicine, I know a lot of people do that, and that's kind of where my sisters landed up. Um, but I think it's really about your passion. Like, where does your passion lie? Do you want to help people? Uh, people may choose that they want to help people through, for example, doing something where it's social work, for example, where you get to kind of do hands-on in terms of helping people. I think my route has really been um, consulting as well as now creating a social platform where, you know, I help people from a digital point of view. So I think it's really about the person. Like I, I can't be prescriptive around what that would be, um, but I think it's just about what are you passionate about? And the sooner you find that which you're passionate about, I think that is really where your true authentic power starts to play. Because I think a lot of people go through their entire life not even understanding um, that they have the power to firstly define what it is that they like. Um, people sometimes you know, spend many years doing something or um, you know, not aligning with themselves to say, what are my, what are my true passions? Where do I really want to, to spend my time and impact the world in the biggest way? What does living an authentic life mean to you? So I think, uh, Shamila, you know, um, we grew up in a world where society likes to dictate what our, uh, you know, sort of milestones need to be in life. So they dictate that you need to be married by a certain age, you need to have a child by a certain age, you need to do A, B, C, D. It's almost like a list, a to-do list that you need to do. Um, and I think authenticity for me is something that I'm really passionate about, even within my brand of Boss Babes, to say that we need to spend time with ourselves to determine what it is that we really like and what we enjoy. Because sometimes what we like and enjoy is what other people sort of pass on to us to say, okay, so this is what you need to do in your life. But I think for me, what's been really helpful is to kind of step back um, and just get to know yourself. It sometimes can take years to actually find out, you know, what is Tony about? What does she like genuinely? Not what, you know, the media asks her to li like or what society has defined for her to like. What does she actually like for herself? And I think that's really where your purpose starts to emerge. Um, your passions also start to emerge, even though you should already know as a person what it is that you're passionate about. But that's really, for me, ultimately how I found my purpose as such with the Boss Babes and my purpose to want to impact and empower women in a bigger way um, than, than simply just working a corporate job. So we're talking about passion. We're talking about purpose. What inspires you or who inspires you? So I think for me, inspiration really comes from a wide range of sources. Um, I'm personally inspired by my family, uh, my sisters for starters, who, you know, are working uh, in such a tough environment at this point. Um, I have friends that complain to me and say, oh, you know, I had a bad day today. And I quickly try and bring them back to say, you know, let's define bad. You know, we've got people working in, in COVID wards and watching people literally slip away daily uh, and watching the impact that it has on their family, for example. Um, and these are just very real things that people are dealing with at this point. Um, and to see like our doctors and just our healthcare workers in general, you know, going out there every day, putting on a brave face for, for the people that are in those wards um, and just doing it day in and day out. is just such an inspiration to me. Um, I also draw a lot of inspiration from other powerful women of South Africa. Uh, I mean, having had a social media presence for such a long time, I've got to meet a lot of our powerful sort of A-lister South African celebrities. Um, and I think I definitely draw inspiration from one in particular, um, definitely Bonang. I think anyone that follows her, I mean, you know, it's, it's all about, for me, it's all about authenticity. And I think that every opportunity that I've met her. Firstly, she has such deep respect uh, for the media. She always gives us interviews and, you know, we'll make sure that the pictures that we take are that we're happy with it rather than she being happy with it. So I think there's definitely um, a lot of like powerful women that I look up to. She's one of them. Um, just because every time you meet her, she's just so human. You know, she's there to build a human connection with you. It's not about this name or this brand that's speaking before her. Um, she's just a human being that's connecting with another human being. Um, and I really appreciate that. I mean, working or being exposed to an environment that sometimes sort of has a lot of um, rose-tinted glasses, if I can call it, um, it's really good to see authentic personalities coming through. And that's really, truly what inspires me, just, just learning from other women 
um, that have really had immense success in their career paths. I love Bonang. I think she's such an inspiration to everyone out there, such a dynamic entrepreneur, and she's always, always looking for new things and starting new things. Kirmini, starting Boss Babes of South Africa, I mean, that's such a big name. You know, it's a platform that you created to uplift women. Um, tell me, what would be your best advice to women out there? So I think for me, firstly, um, women out there face numerous challenges at the moment, especially in South Africa. I mean, gender based violence is such a huge thing at the moment uh, and people are afraid to talk about it. But I really created this platform for women to have a voice. You know, um, if you're afraid to say something in on your personal page or to a friend, you could use Boss Bears of South Africa as almost like, um, you know, a test to share your thoughts or share your view on the world. It's really meant to be a very safe space where women of South Africa uh, inspire and, and uplift each other. So if I have a personal story that I want to share, uh, I mean, they say sharing your story is sometimes the most inspirational thing you can do for others because they may they might just find some deep inspiration in there that, you know, someone else may not. So I think it's really about telling your story, uh, owning your power, and most importantly, living from an authentic place, determining who you are as a woman, uh, and determining what it is that you want to put out there in the world. Because I think it, women sometimes are afraid to even speak their mind. Um, you're given a seat at the table, but sometimes you, you feel afraid to actually speak your mind. This is a great platform to even network with other powerful women. I mean, on our platform, we've got women from different walks of life. So we've got, you know, different skills, lawyers, attorneys. We've even got some A-listers on the, on the group. So it's really about being able to leverage the power of a South African woman, minus the titles and minus the status, but just being able to use that platform to network effectively. Well done on that because I've, I've read some of the comments and I know a lot of people look up to you. So I think you're really doing a good job in inspiring women out there and you know wanting them to come out and tell their stories because we know that the more you talk, the more you tell your stories, the more impactful it's going to be in the long term. So Kovini, this brand of yours, um, Bus Babes of South Africa, I just love that name. Tell me about the recent <laughs> campaigns that you've had or what's in store for us to watch out for. Okay, okay so as a philanthropist, I often like to partner with um, non-profit organizations. I get a lot of joy from doing that. Um, so last year we partnered on a campaign for Reach for a Dream Foundation. As you know, uh, they aim to make dreams come true for um, children who are suffering cancer and often very, very terminal cases. So our influencer team, Boss Babe Influencers, really partnered with them to try and drive up a campaign to help them to generate revenue for these initiatives that they run. So I think that that's really um, the one thing that speaks to me. The other thing is we've also been involved in a um, sort of a collaboration with the Future Females group. Uh, Future Females is also a very woman empowerment group, and I've had the opportunity of presenting um, what Boss Babes is all about and sharing our services. But I think more also importantly than that, um, Boss Babes is a digital creation agency and we um, allow women of South Africa with the digital skill to join our team uh, and ultimately partner with our experts to deliver services to brands. So brand strategy, how to create content. We've just launched earlier on today something very exciting, which I'm sure the audience would love. Um, it's called Bossgram, and basically it's a collaboration where we'll be running these digital masterclasses to basically help the women of South Africa, or actually our community. Um, it is a paid course, but it's at a severe discount at the moment that we're offering it to our community, um, really to help people to ace their social media game. Because at the moment, the world has changed. After COVID-19, the world has changed. It's all about social media. People are spending so much of time on social media, and we just got together and we said, you know, it, can our boss babes actually afford not to be on social media, especially if you've got a small business, um, if you've got a personal brand that you're managing, it's just, just so important. Um, and that's really the latest concept that we've come up with called Bossgram, which is going to be a one-on-one -on -one digital masterclass for our clients to help them to be able to take that knowledge away and be able to implement uh, across their social media pages. So is that launched on Boss Babes page on Facebook? Uh, on Instagram for now, but Facebook probably later on this afternoon. 
Okay, perfect. Uh, do you want to maybe tell us a little bit about the costing? Yeah, so at the moment we are running a special, which is an hour, a, a two and a half hour session, which will include content from myself being a digital creator, as well as from an SME perspective, we've got Olivia, who is our digital creator for Boss Babes. So it will be a two and a half hour session that is currently going at a cost of 1,995 Rand. And the difference is it's going to be tailored. So if you come in for the one hour one-on-one -on -one session, you're gonna tell us about your business, we're gonna understand your business. We're gonna teach you exactly what you need to post, when you need to post it, um, and how you need to post it. Those are the three main components when it comes to social media and kind of being good at it. Um, those are the three components that we're gonna help you to map out so that you're able to kind of create awareness because it's all about the awareness of your brand. Um, I was telling someone the other day, you can have the most amazing brand in the world, but if no one knows about it, um, it's quite pointless. If it can't generate your income, it also can't change your life. So I think it's all, Boss Babes is all about empowering women. And our latest offering is specifically around um, social media and helping people to really ace their social media games. And you can go onto our Instagram page, which is Boss Babes of South Africa. Uh, and there is a video that we've posted in terms of what we've discussed earlier this morning. And yeah, we've already been getting a lot of emails and people wanting to sign up. So that's really, really awesome. So your experience with social media, you're a social media expert. Um, what would you say is one of the biggest problems or errors that you've noticed of someone posting something that you feel that is not supposed to be on social media? I think for me, the beauty of social media is it gives you freedom of expression, of course, within certain boundaries. But I think the other beauty of it is that you as a person get to choose what it is that you want to follow. So people often say, you know, there's a lot of bad things in social media, but it means that you're choosing. You are, as, as a person is making a conscious decision to choose to follow that. I think that's especially the beauty of Instagram where you choose the inspiration that you want to, want to follow. If something is not inspiring you, if it's making you feel bad, if it's body shaming you, looking at someone all the time, don't follow that person. That's really my advice. Social media can be a really powerful tool. I mean, it's really opened up doors in my life that I could never have imagined. Um, five years ago, I did a post and it went viral. And that's pretty much how my name sort of got, got, new and got known within the industry. And it was, it was a joke. I did it to just see what would happen. And I didn't expect this kind of response. So I think it really opens up doors in, in, in an amazing way. But I think it's also about your intention. What are you choosing to use social media for? Um, choose inspiration, choose to follow people that, you know, inspire you, role models, um, South African icons, and people that you can learn from. There is so much of learning that you can, that you, can you know, get from Instagram. Um, people think that Instagram is about taking selfies and becoming famous. Um, but what they fail to realize is that there is so much of work that goes into actually being an influencer. I mean, I've got a team of people that really look after my account, that are taking pictures of me, that are editing it for hours. So what you're seeing on social media is often a highlight reel. And that's the other thing that people need to realize. That is not my life. It is not perfect. Um, it is a depiction of what we're putting out there. But by no means is that the way I'm looking every day, for example, or glammed up with lights in my face. So I think it's also just the acknowledgement and the understanding of that is that social media is sometimes, especially for influencers, can be almost like a full-time job, which is why I've got a team helping me. There are hours of things that happen behind the scenes that people don't see. Um, and I think it's always like wise to be aware of that so that when you're scrolling through Instagram and you just see perfection, that you don't start to devalue yourself in terms of self-worth perspective. You're aware of, you know, these are things that people are spending hours and, and a lot of money um, investing in services to kind of give that, what I would call, perfection look. So I think it's also just important to know that what you're looking at is a highlight reel and by no means is representative of the way my team and I would be looking, you know, in our PJs at eight o'clock at night. So I think it's just very um, good to be aware of that. But yeah, it's a powerful tool if you learn how to use it correctly. Um, and that's really what we're trying to open up, especially to our small businesses with, with the COVID impact to say, how can we help you to put your brand out there in a very um, effective and eloquent way um, so that people can actually see your service and hopefully start to buy into it. Good luck for that. I'm sure a lot of people will latch on because we all need to upskill ourselves at some point in time. Kavini, just going back to social media, we have a lot of youngsters on social media. I'm talking about the younger girls that are vulnerable, 
um, at yeah. some point, social media was under 18, no, over 18, but now it's gone to yeah. I think from 10 or 12 or something like that. I know, and I'm sure you know as well, we get a lot of inbox messages from predators. I call them predators. Um, yes. What would be your advice yeah. to these young people? I think, again, it just comes to being wary, you know, and um, people or the world at a whole is going to be constantly feeding you information, you know. So I think it's also, and that's why they had the age limit initially. So you're able to actually discern what is something that you want to take into your personal space and what is something that you probably want to block or ignore. And I think that sometimes comes with a level of maturity, um, just, just to put it, put it, put it blankly. Um, I think people just need to kind of firstly understand that social media is a very public space. So when you're going onto social media and you're creating yourself an Instagram platform, it's an open platform. You know, anyone is going to see that anyone can comment. So I think that's also where, especially if you're really young and you're joining, you know, Instagram, um, it's about being able to determine what is going to represent you well as well. You know, um, you know, we have, we have people that are being bullied or that are posting things that are not aligned with perhaps their age group for example. Um, and those are things that I think parents need to then be involved in to kind of, you know, have some kind of oversight or even mentors could be very helpful from an oversight perspective um, because it really is, it is a tool that gives you a lot of freedom. And I think, again, it comes down to how you as an individual choose to use that tool. Um, in terms of predators, I mean, that again just comes to knowledge. So if you're finding someone is, you know, sending you a direct message um, I've had some of my own sad stories to tell in that respect. Um, it's really about being able to look at it and say, you know, this is not what I'm on social media for. I'm here to make an impact. So this doesn't serve me. And by that means, we would just, our team would pretty much just block it. So I think that's the power you've got with social media to block out anything, as you do in life, to block out anything that just does not serve you as a person. Yes, I actually get really worried because, you know, we are adult enough and we mature enough thinking we know that we can block these people, but it's just the youngsters that are out there that don't know too well, you know, they would just sort of accommodate these people. Kovini, just going yeah. back to you and social media and the corporate life, I just want to find out about the balancing act. How do you do that? So it's something that I, I get asked a lot, of course. Um, but yeah, I think for me, uh, it's really about living something that I'm really passionate about. Um, and I'm just lucky that I've got an amazing team, like I mentioned, of photographers and social media managers and PR people um, that are part of Boss Babes and that help me to, you know, maintain this presence on social media. I mean, I have an eight to five, which um, I love doing because it also helps me to empower and uplift women in my space, but in a more professional setting. So I think it's really about as a human being, we're not just meant for one thing. And I think that's what people need to understand. You know, it's just because you study something or you're passionate about a particular subject from a study point of view, it doesn't mean that your life has to, has to be your job. And I think that's also the message that we're trying to put out in terms of boss babes is that women these days are multifaceted. And instead of judging that, we need to actually embrace that concept to say, you know, you can be a beauty queen and you can be a doctor. Or you can be, a, I don't know, a presenter who does a radio show and you can also work in a corporate. I mean, I've got tons of friends that work in corporate and do so many other things outside of that. So I think it's also about just helping women to be safe with the fact that you're allowed to be multifaceted. It's not illegal. It's not illegal to do more than one thing. As human beings, we are definitely not made to do one thing. And I think that's the message of Boss Babes to say, we have so many powerful women on our platform and they're not doing one thing. You know, we've got women that are in corporate, that are chefs, that are poets, that are writing their now their third novel. I mean, it's all about finding your passion and being able to play to those strengths thereafter. And I, I really believe it's possible. I mean, I've got a team that manages my stuff, so maybe it's easier for me to say. But I just feel that if you've got 24 hours in a day, you need to be filling that with things that you enjoy doing. I mean, if you're going to be working an eight to five, that's a nine hour, a nine hours out of your 24 hours. Of course, you've got to sleep. But what, you need to be honest with yourself as to what are you doing with the rest of your time? And I think it comes down to how are you feeding your soul for me? What are you doing that's really impacting something bigger than yourself, you know? Um, and I think it's all about finding that passion and that purpose and integrating it because the world has changed even now with, with COVID. Like it's no longer about even an eight to five in our world. It's now what they call work-life integration. So you go live your life. If you need to do something for an hour, you do it, you come back. 
you get back on your email and that's really the way the world has changed. I mean, it's, it's actually brilliant from that perspective where um, it's taken away this notion that you've got to, you know, be online from eight to five and just sitting there, even if you're in, unproductive and you're thinking about another hypothetically a doctor's appointment that you need to go to, but you're feeling stuck. So I think the world is changing where even corporates, even companies are becoming a lot more open to saying, how can we get the best out of an employee? How can we allow them to each of their strengths, give them the freedom um, together, of course, with the responsibility to really be the best version of themselves? Because I believe that that is what our purpose here in life is for. It's not just to say I'm defined by my job. You know, this is my title and this is my job. Um, it's really about finding what you're passionate about and then sharing that with the world in the most effective way. I love that. Tell me about, you know, we're talking about so much juggling, diversification, doing a whole lot of, whole spectrum of things. Yeah. We are for women, right? Um, <laughs> Absolutely. Tell me a bit about self-care. How do you manage that? Okay, so I definitely have hours um, in a week that I literally switch off from social media, switch off from emails. Um, those days in the normal world, it used to be going to a spa and getting a lovely massage. But gone are those days. <laughs> so self-care for me is really, um, you know, watching a great Netflix series, for example, that inspires me without having my cell phone nearby. So I think it's also important to be mindful and to be present. So if I'm watching a series, I want to be focused on that series, for example. Um, I want to take it in. I want to enjoy the moment. And when I'm bored of it, I want to do something else. I also get a lot of joy from watching TED Talks, which is something that also is part of my self-care routine. Um, just the inspiration that you can get from ordinary life people are so, it's so powerful. Like some of the TED Talks that I, that I watch can last in my mind for three or four days where I think about, wow, if somebody's in a wheelchair, um, you know, she was in an accident, they call her the Iron Woman. Um, and now she's inspiring people from her wheelchair. And it's just that like things that get us so, so inspirational. It gives you good perspective on life. And I think even on social media, the whole thing is a creative process. So in order to be creative, you need to take time for yourself to, you know, to unwind, to relax, to be, to have the creative freedom. Because if you're constantly stressing, you're constantly chasing deadlines and that kind of thing, it becomes difficult to really unleash your creative freedom. Um, and it's something that we all have within us. But yeah, I think self-care is really sometimes just connecting with people that you love, having a real conversation. I mean, my friends and family are the people that keep me most grounded. Um, when I'm having a bad day, they're the first people that I call. So self-care, I think, is just about identifying your channels for that self-care and then being quite diligent about actually taking it when you feel yourself burning out, when you feel it's too much, when, when you feel overwhelmed. I mean, we all feel overwhelmed, especially now with the pandemic. There's, there's levels of anxiety that the world is, is struggling with um, and we don't know how to deal with it. So I think it's just very important to you know, be diligent about giving to yourself first and filling up your own cup first before trying to help anyone else. I love those messages because last night I was in tears. I just felt that I just couldn't handle it because I'm doing so much. And I was just, it was just overwhelming. And I just felt that, you know, I'm heading for a burnout. So, so yes, self-care is very, very important. Kovini, your message to the women out there. It's Women's Month in South Africa. What is your power message? Okay. My power message firstly is that women are powerful. And that's just a statement. But women need to firstly recognize how powerful they are. And the only way that you can do that if you're a woman of South Africa is to really spend time identifying who you are as a person. Because sometimes we get bogged down by the opinions of others. You know, people say you're sensitive or you're too aggressive or you're too whatever it may be. And we somehow let those opinions define us and ultimately define our self-worth. Um, so my message to the woman of South Africa is really never let the opinions of anyone define your self-worth. You need to spend time to identify who it is you, who, who you are um, and find your power and own it. The most important thing after you found this power or this burning fire inside of you is really to be able to own it. How do you use it in a way that's going to help other people? If it's a story that you've been through um, that maybe was very traumatic and now you want to share it with the world and show them how you've overcome it, you know, own your power, own your story, and don't be afraid to live an authentic life. I think that is my message. I love that message. It's so powerful. How can one get hold of you? 
Okay, so if you're interested in signing up for one of our digital masterclasses, um, you can drop me an email at connect at bossbabesofsouthafrica.co.za uh, and uh, one of our social media team members will respond to you. That's to sign up for our digital masterclass that I spoke about. Alternatively, you can join our group on Facebook, which is called Boss Babes of South Africa. Um, the same name on Instagram with no spaces. And that's pretty much how you can engage with our content. And we're always looking for feedback from our audience. We're always looking for what do you want to see next? Um, what can we help you with? Like this, this course on digital creation really came up from the fact that women were struggling to, during COVID. They'd been opening up new businesses, um, but they didn't, they didn't know how to get the message across to, to other people about these businesses that they were opening up. So that's really how it came. So we really welcome your feedback. We would love to have you as part of the sisterhood of Boss Babes of South Africa. And thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to talk about something that I am truly passionate about. It's only a pleasure, Kovani. Thank you so much for actually encouraging, inspiring, and motivating the women of South Africa out there. And I'm sure a lot of people are going to join you on your Instagram and Facebook pages. We're going to look out for you because we know there's a lot more in store. And I wish you everything of the best on your journey. Thank you. Thank you so, so much, Amila. This has been an amazing interview. Thank you so, so much. Take care and God bless. Yes. Cheers, guys. Bye.